Okay. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. The next seven weeks, our study is going to be regarding the essentials of Christianity. Some people say, well, what is Christianity? Or what is the deal with Christianity? People have been asking questions as long as Christianity exists. And these people just seem, uh, they talk about people that are involved in Christianity. They seem just ordinary. So why does it seem like something that we don't have? And <clears throat> sometimes they seem puzzled regarding what Christianity really is. So they said, you really believe that a guy arose from the grave and that he's going to come back in the sky someday? So people are good at misunderstanding, you know, what Christianity is. Even believers also misunderstand what Christianity is uh, at times. The basics of Faith. So, in the next seven sessions, uh, we will be exploring things like God's nature. And today, the title of the lesson is The Nature of God. So, uh, <clears throat> Robert Galecto is the one who wrote our lessons for this seven series. And so, he said that his observation, you know, regarding Christianity or either any other uh, subject regarding uh, Christ, nature, that even, you know, if you ask preschoolers to do something as far as calculus, well, their little minds cannot comprehend what calculus is all about, even adults. We didn't have calculus when I was in school. We had uh, mathematics, and then we had algebra when we were in high school. But... Uh, we know that one subject remains uh, beyond our ability to grasp. Just like he mentioned that the little minds of the preschoolers could not grasp what calculus, you know, is all about. So the one thing is the Trinity. A lot of people do not still understand what the Trinity is. It's not, do you know the word Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible? And this, of course, we know is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But it's one, all God. And let's have a word of prayer before we uh, begin this study. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day that you have given us. We're thankful for the eyesight, being able to see what the sun radiates and how warm we feel with the sun shining. We thank you for that. Thank you for the ability to come to church today. And we pray, dear God, that as we begin this study, as we dig into the book of John, the last of the four Gospels, that you will lead us and direct us in understanding truly what the nature of God is. It's our prayer in your name. Amen. So, you know, our um, little mind, so to speak, cannot comprehend all of this three in one. And Christians have indeed, they've struggled uh, through the years to understand what the doctrine of of the Trinity is, in fact, for thousands of years. But we are going to seek to understand the nature of God. And the key truth uh, is God that has revealed himself to us, as we mentioned, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
but it's just one God. And, you know, it's just like us. You know, we use cars without fully comprehending how a car works. Boy, I tell you, it, my car is not a late model car. But it gets me where I'm going until I see some lights come on that dash. You know, lately I've seen three red lights come on. I thought, well, what's going on? So I tried to describe without looking at the book to my son-in-law what the lights are. Of course, at VSA, I know, and then the most important, I said, oh goodness, it says check engine. It did it again Friday, you, he calibrates it and all, so we don't have to take it in. He calibrated it again yesterday, said the next time we may have to take it in, you know. But it's good, but we just, we don't understand how an auto actually operates at times, do we? And we have to depend on someone else. So, you know, uh, it says that the Gospel of John, as we mentioned in our prayer, is the last of the four Gospels. And the message that John was trying to get across uh, to help readers believe that Jesus in, is the Messiah. That was his point at the time that he wrote this Gospel of John. He was trying to get across to the believers that they understood fully that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. We know that the first 12 chapters of John, it was regarding Jesus' earthly ministry. And the remaining uh, chapters, they emphasized the uh, surrounding effects, what was taking place as far as or would take place the trial, the death, and the resurrection. And our scripture, uh, to begin with, John 14, 8 through 11. Lord, said Philip, show us the Father, and that's enough for, me, for us. Jesus said to him, have I been among you all this time, and you do not know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show me or show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, Believe because of the works themselves. And the uh, key word in that scripture, the works. Because we know the miracles that Jesus performed, these not only demonstrated that Jesus is God, but they also validated the truth of his words, they validated the truth of his teachings. And indeed, we know in, uh, we, you know, Jesus used that word show to describe his ultimately uh, demonstrated works that he did was by faith and the uh, miracles that he did too. It was works indeed. And he also uh, mentioned uh, you know, when it, Philip said, show me, show us. And then, of course, you know, he questioned Philip. Have you not seen me? Have you not seen the God, the Father in me, in what I do? And Jesus used that word show to describe uh, faith is ultimately demonstrated by works. And we know that on the last night, that Jesus had with his disciples before his arrest and before the crucifixion, he told them, if you know me, you will also know my father. And Philip was asking Jesus for uh, physical evidence of the father and how it, it really existed. 
And Jesus shared with him the relationship with him. And Jesus, of course, had already said knowing him was the same as knowing the Father. And he said, but somehow Philip must have missed the mark somewhere. When Jesus had said in here, um, have I been among you all of this time and you do not know me, Philip? And the one who has seen me has seen the Father. And he said, look, look at the flesh and the blood. We see God. He said, God the Son and God the Father. And we know that he was trying to get across to him where he could easily understand, even though we know that Jesus had been with the, uh, the disciples and ministered to them and healed the sick. And he did so many miracles and his teachings and all were from God. And Jesus reminded him many times, he said, he and the Father were one. And he said, they were and are co-equal in the sense of the word. And Jesus had been, like I mentioned, three years with them. And he said God had lived with them every day. And they had seen everything that he had done. They had heard his preaching uh, continuously. And they knew that God uh, was indeed and should know that he was Jesus Christ. And they needed just to grasp that reality uh, deep down in their hearts. And Jesus affirmed the fact that he was also God the Father, that he was seeing God the Father in him. And he said, you, surely you have seen the Father in me in whatever I have done. You have seen my Father. And, I'll, you know, often we may share some of the same struggles that the disciples had. And John's message, indeed, it was challenging us to trust Jesus by faith. And just like the first century followers, that indeed they've trusted God by faith. And as their faith matured, they would rely more and more on faith and less by sight. But in the moments that the disciples uh, were trusting God, they also were maturing uh, in their, and they were growing in their faith. But in the moment that they had there with Jesus, there was some doubt, apparently, in Philip's understanding. So it might, you know, we may, if we had been uh, in that period of time, and even today, uh, it may be hard to understand God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit in certain situations. And so if we're honest, we also will uh, admit that maybe there's doubts in our mind at times. And, you know, maybe we have some similar questions, just like the disciples did. So we also, we fight the same battle. And the answer is still the same. That knowing Jesus is the same as knowing God the Father. And Jesus reveals uh, God in many, many different ways. And he also, he does it in a personable way, a relatable way, uh, too. Because we know Jesus who is fully human, is also fully God, God the Father, the sovereign, all-powerful, holy creator of the universe. And also, it can be seen in Jesus Christ. You know, like I mentioned in the prayer, we wake up a lot of mornings, have we not, during the last few months, and there'd be raining. And when you, the rain, did it cause happiness in, the, in our hearts and lives at that time and for five, six months? No, it kind of depresses us, doesn't it? But when we see the sun come out and brightens everything up 
it livens everything up. Does it not liven us too? Well, you know, uh, we know that indeed that these things were created by God. The sun, the moon, the stars, the flowers, the trees, the ocean, everything was created by God. And we know that God, of course, should receive praise and recognition. We trust in him for all that he has created. We're thankful for what he has created uh, indeed. And we are so thankful that God has shown us that he is God the Father, God the Son, in everything that he has created. And our next scripture is John 14, 16 through 20. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him. But you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Jesus reminded his followers again that he and the Father were one. And of course, we know in this scripture, he was telling them that he was going to leave a counselor. Of course, in the King James Version, we know it says a comforter. And, you know, and what is the definition of counselor? It's someone that goes alongside, and he was trying to relate that to the disciple. Uh, and, of course, we know that the Spirit protects, guides, and supports believers until Jesus does return. You know, someone called in to help uh, one day, and they called on behalf of another mediator. But uh, really, we know that this counselor that is being referred to is not a legal uh, term, it's a teacher. And it reminds them of what Jesus taught. Jesus was a teacher. Indeed, was he not? He was a minister. He was a preacher. So we know that, indeed, this counselor was not um, a legal. He was not a lawyer, though. So we know that it's not somebody like Perry Mason. Um, it, we remember Perry Mason's uh, episodes on TV. But... Jesus, indeed, he was trying to get across that he was not going to leave them by themselves, indeed. And we know that Jesus also had uh, just given what seemed to be the sad news that he was going away, and he, they couldn't go with him. And one of his disciples he knew was going to betray him. And that was sad for him, indeed. And he did not plan to leave them alone. He said that he was going to leave a counselor. In fact, he felt that he was giving them a gift and giving them the counselor. And that he thought that was better than the gift that was sitting right in front of them, meaning the gift of Jesus. And he relayed to them that this counselor uh, is someone who would come along beside them and who would comfort them, he would encourage them, and then he would exalt uh, them, and he would exhort them. And Jesus was, of course, speaking in the third person uh, of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus used the word that means another of the same kind that he was. And so in doing so, He's, in other words, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, would be just like Jesus. That was difficult for them to understand. They were trying to grasp that. And he was trying to say 
They both are God. So Jesus told them two things about this Holy Spirit. He said the counselor coming uh, so the disciples wouldn't be left as orphans. He said, I'm not going to leave you alone, is what he mentioned in the scripture. And he said the counselor is, was coming so that they could still have access to God, uh, just as they had, at, had access to God when they talked face to face. And he said, you are not going to be alone. I am giving you this special gift. And he felt that that was a good explanation to them, but it was difficult for them to grasp. And the love of disciples sitting there with Jesus, and they had already fulfilled the only requirement for receiving the Holy Spirit. They uh, were recognized, and they had, they had recognized Jesus, and they also had put their faith and trust in him as the Messiah because they said that he was the one who came to save them. And as we mentioned earlier, that John's gospel in writing this was to make certain that they understood that Jesus was the Messiah and that he was the one who came to save them. And the promise of the Holy Spirit meant that they would not be disconnected with a relationship with God. So this all was good news uh, to them. When Jesus, the Son of God, is in your life, the Holy Spirit will work through you in many, many different ways. Aren't we thankful that we have the Holy Spirit to direct us and to guide us and to comfort us? And we, if we did not have the Holy Spirit, we would not have our belief and trust in God, would we? Aren't we thankful that he did indeed give us uh, the Holy Spirit, which is difficult to even try to comprehend, you know. And they, it was difficult for the disciples to try to comprehend to, for them to go ahead. If Jesus was going away, they did not fully understand that. And even though he had been telling them that he was going away, it was difficult for them but he told them that they would, the Holy Spirit would help them to carry out the desires and the will of the Father. So in uh, our next scripture is John 14, 23 through 26. Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. The one who doesn't love me will not keep my word. The word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. So in John's gospel, we know that Jesus often connected love and obedience. And it's the difference between talking about our commitment to Christ and then actually demonstrating the love of Christ in our heart and in our life, uh, too. Because we know if we have a true relationship with Christ, then the love of Christ is going to show through in whatever we do and what we say. So Jesus uh, promised his presence. Jesus said both he and the Father would make our home with those who love and who obey him. And in a sense, this is what Jesus did when he gave us uh, the Holy Spirit. That was indeed the gift of the Holy Spirit for us. And it is indeed today as we accept Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. And we know that he was telling them, 
He, he promised his presence, and he, Jesus said both he and the Father would make our home with those who love and obey. And the disciples had secured a dwelling place in eternity. We have secured a dwelling place in eternity as we have accepted the Lord as our Savior. And the disciples, you know, as I mentioned, they were very secure. And the proof was that God had dwelling with them on earth. And the Spirit's presence, we know that it provides evidence that Jesus is still active in the lives of believers and followers. And we see evidence, uh, do we not, of people's actions to empower them to share the gospel in languages that they didn't speak. That reminds us of our missionaries who feel called and led to go wherever Jesus would have them go. And they go to many countries. They do not know the cultures. They do not know the languages. And they have to prepare themselves. They have to learn. And it's wonderful. We are so uh, proud and pleased and happy that people who respond to the gospel, regardless of the languages, regardless of the cultures, that they share it with uh, others and they share the love of Jesus. So we see this action in the people, we see this evidence in people's action to empower, them, uh, to empower them to share uh, other languages and to learn the gospel in other languages that they don't speak and that they also, we know that Jesus heals uh, people of other languages and he also, uh, we know that he causes the lame to walk, the blind to see and so many evidences of Jesus miraculous of uh, healing power and to fully equip the disciples for their mission he was trying to get them to understand what he was telling them that they would encounter people of other languages they would encounter people of other cultures and that the Holy Spirit would indeed empower them to lead and to guide and to teach them and to be a blessing to them sharing the gospel with them. And the Holy Spirit is the same today that we read about in the scriptures as he was in the days of the disciples, the biblical days. And we see the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in the hearts and the lives of so very many people. Aren't we thankful? We have seen it in the lives of our own loved ones. And we could not we could not continue with our lives if we did not have the love of God and the, also the Holy Spirit to lead and direct us minute by minute, hour by hour, and day by day. And we have so much to be thankful for and to let our light shine that others might see Christ in our life and that he will receive the blessings. And we indeed are thankful for the Gospel of John. And as I mentioned, we will be studying for the next uh, seven weeks regarding the essentials of Christianity. And we're thankful for the writer who, of course, brought all of this scripture uh, to our attention. And we're thankful that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins and that he left with us uh, the power of the Holy Spirit and aren't we thankful? We have so many blessings. The greatest gift he gave us is eternity with him. Heavenly Father, as we close this study today, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for John, who was trying to get across to the, or Jesus was trying to get across to the disciples through John's gospel, Heavenly Father, who recorded it, that he was not leaving them alone. He was not leaving them as an orphan, 
he was not deserting them, Heavenly Father, uh, but he was leaving them to carry on his work and to understand what God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit was. And really, Father, we know that three in one is wonderful, and we know that through the years that we even have, you know, had doubt, we had questions, how do they actually function? But it's, we know it's the Godhead, Heavenly Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit that leads and directs us day by day to carry on your work. We pray, God, that we will obey and that we will honor and we will show love and that we also, Heavenly Father, whatever we do, we do it in your name to glorify you. It's our prayer in your name today. Amen.